All right, sounds like um, quite a few have joined us. We're up to uh, 70 participants at the moment, which is nice to see, and um, we'll get started. So today's topic is on fast set uh, concrete. This is part of our webinar isolation series, um, which is a series which will run every day at 11 o'clock, allowing anyone to, to hop in and uh, join us and, um, and hopefully learn a little bit about some of the things that we have expertise in, in civil engineering. So fast set technology. Uh, we're talking today about calcium sulfo alumina technology. Uh, it's a type of cement system, which is an alternative to ordinary Portland cement. It provides a rapid cure, uh, long-term stability, lower carbon footprint than OPCs. It's chemically resistant and it actually has worldwide usage. So being used for quite a few decades now in USA, Europe and Asia uh, as an alternative to OPCs where fast set properties are required. So airport runways, road, pavement replacements. Fairly new technology to Australia, probably only over the last couple of decades here. And just looking at our experience in Australia, um, bear with us for those from other parts of the world, uh, the first real large usage of, of, of uh, CSA systems was at Sydney Airport back in 2005 when the A380s first came out. Uh, you can see there in the photo, General Homes Drive, which is a tunnel which runs under Sydney Airport. There were concerns about the stability of that with the extra loading from the A380s. So there was a program undertaken to put precast slabs into the runway surface overnight, grouted them in place, ash filled over the top and have a plane land back on it each morning. And the fast set grout, which was used, gave 10 MPA in one hour, um, which allowed that runway to be open to traffic uh, each day, went for around six months. Following that, they looked at using the cement technology for larger slab replacements. There was the Pugs project in 2012 at Melbourne Airport and many other projects uh, since then. In 2017, the first mobile way batch units um, were introduced. And I'll talk a little bit more about the technology on the trucks later, but that actually allowed the cement powders to be weighed as the powder was being dispensed and improved the technology to a point where it was more suitable for use with fast set uh, technology where the water cement ratios could really be controlled. From 2018, based off the back of this technology, we saw approvals in road maintenance as well. New South Wales RMS, for example, and Queensland TMR amongst others, approving their technology for road slab replacements. So why do we need fast set concretes? Uh, you know, there are other alternatives around. There are accelerated concretes where we use calcium chlorides, you may have heard the term chloride accelerated concrete. We know that they have fairly low durability. Uh, not only does the cement structure itself not last as long, but it also the chlorides in the concrete will attack the steel reinforcement. So uh, we needed an alternative so that we could actually eliminate um, traffic management diversions and be able to upgrade roads and runways without closures. So fast set concretes provide a good alternative to other accelerated systems so that we can still progress our work in a fast way comes in a range of different formats, uh, repair mortars, shockcretes, blowable grouts, micro concretes, concrete. Uh, uh, we can do a sub base and lemix out of this, this technology and road pavements. Uh, you can see there in the photo uh, precast segments, which were all founded and put in place and held up using a fast set grout technology, gave 42 MPA in four hours. So the TBMs were able to progress. Uh, at a faster rate while those uh, precast elements were being placed behind the TBM. So lots of different ways where you need fast turnaround times for this technology to be used. The different applications you can see there in the photos or range of applications from airports to bridges, uh, roads, tunnels, uh, where it gets used, um, particularly in shutdowns, bridges, um, any activity which requires a speedy return to service um, and where you would be able to use normal cement systems, but you need to replace it with something which will give a faster turnaround time. So there's been quite a few advancements in fast set technology in the past couple of decades, um, in particular relating to the manufacturer of these products. We're now able to achieve much more consistency with um, repeatable results, which is really important in civil engineering applications. We know that uh, infrastructure is critical. Uh, the risk of failure is very high. So you need to be sure that what you're using will be reliable and it will give you the results you're looking for. We're able to demonstrate a 100 year design life on calcium sulfur aluminate technology now, and I'll talk about the durability components in a moment. 
Um, we've made these products suitable for short mixing times, which is really important when it comes to new application systems with volumetric trucks. We don't have the traditional agitator trucks where they're mixed for 10, 20 minutes. We now have to be able to mix it in 20 seconds as it's coming out of the, the chute. And we need to be able to achieve um, consistent results, which we now can do um, when it comes to set times, uh, workability, and the strengths required. And I'll talk a little bit more about how we achieve all of that and how those advancements have come about. So the manufacturing facilities are an important part of producing that reliability. Uh, the powder blenders need to be capable of mixing multiple minor ingredients in one go. Uh, we need really thorough blending and we need dust containment to minimise losses because you've got lots of small ingredients being added that need to be blended really well and consistently. The quality control uh, comes in a few different stages. Obviously, the raw materials as they come into the factory are all tested upon delivery. We also do monthly type testing. Um, so type testing is something that you typically do uh, when you develop a product. So you develop a product, you do a whole suite of testing on it, you then formulate your, your technical data sheet and everything off that. And then you might not repeat that type testing until a year or two later or until something changes. On top of that, you'll do QC testing, which is done every time you manufacture the product. What we're doing differently is we're doing the type testing every month rather than doing it just when we develop the product. So we'll go down to the factory, take all the raw ingredients, do a full range of testing on the product. And the reason we do that is so that we actually have the 28 day results, 14 day results and other um, results with us before we manufacture the product and before it goes out to site. So we know what the raw materials are doing well in advance of our applicators using it, which gives us a really good um, uh, trend line on, on what's happening with the products and an extra layer of, of control. So the types of things that we're testing constantly, um, powder consistency and pH testing, dimensional stability, I'll talk about that. That's an early age um, shrinkage test. Um, we're doing the regular shrinkage testing, bycat testing for set times. We're doing spread, flow, wet density, um, bleed segregation, and obviously all of the strength characteristics as well that we need. So these are all the types of testing either being done through production or type testing um, while we're producing the product. So obviously providing a lot more reliability around the product. So just getting back to durability, um, one of the, the things with fast sets, there's a stigma attached that kind of says if it's fast set, you can't have durability. And that's something that has come out of you know, the history of fast sets being accelerated with accelerators like calcium chlorides and the like, which do affect the durability. That's not the case anymore. You can actually have fast set and durability in the one, in the one product. Um, previous associated issues with fast set were things like cracking, um, thermal because they were accelerated um, too fast. It's important to note that the calcium sulfide luminates actually produced less heat of hydration than ordinary Portland cement. Um, surface dusting was a problem, loss of strength with time, and no protection to the reinforcement, obviously, if they don't produce that alkaline environment or they have chlorides uh, present. So all of these have now been addressed. Volumetric stability is just, just a quick point on this. Um, CSA cements are very, very low shrinkage. So if you test them in accordance with existing standards, you'll see that the shrinkage comes out at less than 200 to 300 microstrain, depending on the product. The problem is though, current testing only tests a product from seven days to 28 days, effectively. It doesn't tell you a lot about what's happening on in the early age. And particularly with calcium sulfur aluminates, it's really important what happens with those products within the first hour um, and their volumetric stability. So we do a test, you can see in that bottom photo there, um, which is a volumetric stability test. You put the product in in the plastic state and you actually have a dial gauge and you're measuring the expansion and contraction within that first hour. And that's a way of us knowing that the product has been formulated correctly so that we don't see plastic cracking. Okay, so um, that's just one little, little comment just about volumetric stability and one way you'll prevent from ever seeing cracks, uh, prevent seeing cracks in the surface. So other... Um, properties which lend, lead us towards the, the 100 year design line. Um, we have very low shrinkage, less than 300 microstrain. So again, no surface cracking from uh, drying shrinkage, very low chloride content, less than 0.005%, um, low insoluble alkalis and no residual sulfate. So we're not getting an alkali silica reaction and we have a very high resistance to sulfate attack as well with the product. 
We obviously test um, for chloride penetration, so we do Nord testing. We have very slow migration of chloride through the product. It's high density um, and very low permeability. So we avoid that surface dusting and we have very good wear resistance. We also do long-term testing. So we do 900 day pH testing to ensure that we maintain that alkaline environment. Uh, as well, we do 900 day strength increase testing um, to make sure that, that the reaction that occurs after the 28 days is still positive for the product. And part of that is ensuring that you don't have any late formation entry night. And the reason we know we don't have late formation entry night is because of the, the following testing that we do. So everyone's interested in what happens with a fast set concrete within the first 24 hours. They all wanna make sure that they're getting their, their strengths within, within four hours, three hours, two hours. Not a lot of attention is paid to what happens after that. So what can happen is the product actually continues to react. Nothing stops at 28 days. It actually continues reacting after 56 days, starts tapering off after a couple of hundred days. And we know that the reaction is complete, complete and it starts to level out at about 500 days. And we know that through the long-term testing we've done, um, that the product remains stable, the cement matrix is intact, and it hasn't broken down because of the late formation at Trinite. What can happen? Um, if your product isn't formulated correctly, is that the late formation of night can overexpand and then create a breakdown of cement paste and you could end up with a lower strength structure than what you thought you had with things that are happening after the 28 day period. So we test for that to make sure that um, that, that doesn't occur. This is just a, a summary table of, uh, of the results there. All of this, the presentation will be available for download afterwards, also some brochures and some other things. So. We'll get those um, out to everyone who's online. So some of the material advancements and, and some of the adaptions we've had to make uh, to cope for the new types of trucks. So these trucks, as you can see, the, the um, mobile batching units, the auger you can see there in the photo, that's where all the mixing occurs. So the powders and the aggregates all come out. They're dropped into that auger, mixed with the water, and then you have less than 20 seconds of mixing time before the product is put into place. So we've needed to add additives to improve the mixability of the product so that you get thorough mixing within that time. We've had to modify the ingredients so that they dissolve within that time. And all of that ensures that we get consistent results, consistent set times, consistent rheology. So the slump you get when it comes out of the truck is the same slump you get after 10 or 20 minutes when you're about to finish even 30 minutes and 40 minutes, you're getting that same, same slump. And then you're getting the strength on time as well. So the adaption of the mixing was a really important part of developing the powders. One part of that was com converting our plasticizers into liquids rather than using powders. We realized quite a few years ago that our powders were taking two to three minutes to dissolve and that wasn't adequate for this type of application. So we actually converted our plasticizers to liquids which are computer dosed by the trucks. And then that gives us a nice consistent um, work, work, work life for the, for the product for the entire period. And it's active immediately. The other, probably the biggest advancement we've made is moving towards a liquid dosed retarder. So the retarder is actually added on site by the computer control truck. And it gives us greater control over the set time regardless of the environmental conditions. So we can set the working time um, to be the same whether you're working at five degrees or even less or up to 40 degrees or in fact even more, which we have done. So we're able to modify the volume of retarder that's being added depending on the conditions so that the guys on site get the same amount of, of work time. And because it's all computer controlled, you can just punch in the temperature conditions that you're working at and it'll add the right amount of retarder to give you that work life, which is a really important part because we know that for every 10 degree change in temperature, it'll either double or set, double or halve your set times. So that's a really important part of controlling. So these are some, uh, just a summary table of the strengths we're able to achieve um, between compressive strength and flexural strength. So at three hours is greater than 20 MPA compressive strength and flexural strength in excess of 3.6. You can see the other results there. Again, this will all be available for, for download later. Just a little bit on the application systems. So we use volumetric trucks. I've spoken about those a little bit already. They have the powder bins on top and the aggregate bins, um, water and, and separate admixture tanks. Everything gets added into that auger that you can see in the end there. And that auger is creating the mixing and placing the concrete. So that allows us to turn up to site with our 
how to dry, if you like, and able to, to place it all without the fear of it going off in a concrete agitator while it's on its way to site. The mixed designs are completely computerized and calibrated before arriving on site. So they can just put in the temperature conditions and the type of mix that they're looking for and the truck will automatically deliver it. The trucks are able to actually move and pour continuously, which is really important. You don't have to stop the pour to be able to move the truck forward. Um, and we have continuous way batching on the powder bin. So these were previously referred to as volumetric trucks. You may have heard that term previously. We now talk about them as being way batching units. And what that means is that they're actually continuously way batching the powder as it's dispensed into the auger. And that means you get far greater accuracy. So the powder bins sit on load cells and that's making sure that the amount of powder coming out is what you need to achieve the water cement ratio that you're aiming for. So it's giving us much greater accuracy um, over the mixing. Just finishing up with some information on, on site testing now. There are challenges, obviously, when you're working at night with any type of concrete, uh, just having to open up labs and being able to transport product to the labs as well. Um, this becomes even more of a problem when you're talking about fast set products where you need um, strength results to be able to open your road on time. So you, you have the technicians rushing and trying to fill cylinders and um, you know, they have to open their labs every night and they're trying to drive the the cylinders and, um, and the beams off to the lab to get them crushed in time and they'll do a two hour one and um, then maybe a two and a half and a three, but there's no real time data in terms of crushing those, those samples. So it becomes a bit of a challenge in knowing when to open up your lab. We also have the impact of temperature. Those steel cylinders can carry heat and cold depending on the environmental conditions, but particularly in cold temperatures, um, the, the cement uh, and concrete mix doesn't actually produce a lot of uh, exotherm when it's in a cylinder compared to a slab. So the results you're getting in the cylinder aren't at all um, correlating to what you're seeing in a slab. And those strengths can really lag, um, particularly in the first few hours. Cylinders are really more designed for at least 24 hour, maybe 28 day results. We actually needed to look at a new system for two to three hour measurement, um, which we have. Um, and it, it's becoming a, a system, the, the maturity testing, um, that, that's a lot more accepted uh, and, and more widely used. It was developed in the 1950s and it's um, based on the relationship between time and temperature for strength gain. And by calibrating your strength gain in relation to those um, two variables, you can actually get a greater correlation to the real strab, slab strengths. Um, so you can see in that photo there, just down the bottom on the, the left hand side, uh, that's the Bluetooth data unit. There are probes that are embedded into the slab and that provides data to that unit uh, just in terms of the temperature gain um, versus time. And it can give us real time data for um, slab strength and when it's ready to open the traffic. There's a lot of calibration that goes into getting this right, um, but the accuracy is, is incredibly high uh, and we're moving more and more towards this, this type of, of testing. And I think we'll see more of it in the future. And, and I'm planning that we may actually do a, a little webinar just on maturity testing over the next few weeks, just to provide a few more details on how that works and how we achieve the, um, the reliability. So just in summary, um, high early strengths and durability is possible with a fast set. Uh, we can achieve greater productivity with limited access, um, you know, particularly for night works. Uh, there's a lower lifetime cost using calcium sulfur aluminates compared to calcium chloride accelerated products. We can now achieve consistent quality and delivery using all those measures that I've spoken about. Um, and the on-site testing can be a lot more accurate and also in real time than what we've seen in the past with the, the movement in technology. So thank you very much for, for joining us uh, today. We, we've tried to move these presentations down to around 20, 25 minutes now, just to make them a little bit more brief. Uh, and to the point, uh, we've got an email address there. You can either email Greg uh, or myself. Uh, I'm daniel.bosco at bluey.com.au and ask us any questions or feel free to uh, type something into the, um, into the chat if you'd like to now. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, we hope to see you tomorrow and we really appreciate your, your company today and, and you being with us. So thank you again.